What's a piece of trauma that you have that's funny? It has to actually be funny. I'll go first. My dad abandoned my family when I was five years old. That is um, a wife and four kids. He abandoned us and then pursued amateur breakdancing. And he got really good. <laughs> he like blew up. Like he became like a D-list celebrity status, like viral breakdancer. He became like the oldest actively competing breakdancer in the world. And then he got on Good Morning America and talk shows and Washington Post wrote about him and he went super viral and he did all these interviews and he danced with Paula Abdul. Here, I'll show you. Let's see, take a look at this 60 year old break dancer. Yes, 60 <laughs> years yeah. old. Amazing. That's Ben Hart. He's competing at a break dancing competition in Philadelphia and he may not have won, but he, I'll tell you what, he is winning over a lot of people on the internet. Yes. He really is. Yeah. Yep, he's won a lot of people on the internet. This guy wouldn't pay my medical bills. The worst part, damn it, he's good. He should not be able to move his body like that. It's like impossible. It's beautiful. Hey, dad. Like there was no split custody or anything. Like he just like left four kids to do that. He may not have paid for some of my medical bills growing up, but he did give me this breakdancing merchandise. So that's him. He's on his head. Benny Hanna is his b-boy name because his name is Ben Hart. You know, I'll get texts like this. Happy birthday, question mark. And then like links to his to his break dancing videos. So if you have funny trauma, like actual funny haha -ha trauma, I need to hear it. Thank you. Okay, we had her. So she's a TikToker. She has 75,000 followers as we speak. And this particular video that she made has given her over 6 million views. It's gone viral. People are talking about it. So you heard her childhood funny trauma. And her father is popular, like she made us know and um do you know what happened after making this video she got comments in the comment section people were calling her father deadbeat and all that so the father saw it and he responded let's hear the other side of the story you know most of the times we hear just one single story but this time around the father replied let's hear what he has to say okay i wake up at 6 a.m to do some work i get my coffee i sit down i open my computer and what am i greeted with well, hundreds of comments calling me a deadbeat dad, a child abandoner, and all manner of other insults. So I think, what's this all about? Well, after a few minutes of investigation, I discover that my daughter, Maddie, has made a video about me. She's a screenwriter in Hollywood. She's also a big social media influencer with millions of followers. Some of her videos get millions of views. And this video has tens of millions of views. 1 million likes, 20,000 comments, 40,000 bookmarks, 30,000 reposts. It's just insane. So I thought I'd better watch this video. And frankly, I was pretty chagrined by what I heard, to say the least. But honestly, the more I watch this video, the more I like it. Well, I like about 98% of it. However, I do need to correct a few statements in the video. But first, let's just watch Maddie's 90 second video and then I'll give you my comments. What's a piece of trauma that you have that's funny? It has to actually be funny. I'll go first. My dad abandoned my family when I was five years old. That is um, a wife and four kids. He abandoned us and then pursued amateur breakdancing. Some more context is needed here. Needless to say, I will, uh, I will talk about this in a moment. All right, let's continue with the video. And he got really good. <laughs> He like blew up. Like he became like a D-list celebrity status, like viral breakdancer. He became like the oldest actively competing breakdancer in the world. Then he got on Good Morning America and talk shows and Washington Post wrote about him and he went super viral and he did all these interviews and he danced with Paula Abdul. And here, I'll show you. Let's see, take a look at this 60 year old breakdancer. Yes, 60 years This guy wouldn't pay my medical bills. That is not true. More on that in a minute. The worst part, damn it, he's good. He should not be able to move his body like that. It's like impossible, it's beautiful. Hey dad. Thank you, Maddie. 
Like there was no split custody or anything. Like he just like left four kids to do that. He may not have paid for some of my medical bills growing up, but he did give me this breakdancing merchandise. So that's him. He's on his that is a nice shirt. It's his b-boy name because his name is Ben Hart. You know, I'll get texts like this. Happy birthday question mark. And then like links to his to his breakdancing video. That's true. Oh, if you have funny trauma, like actual funny haha -ha trauma. I need to hear it. Thank you. Okay. In many ways, I love this video. And of course, I love my daughter, Maddie. And we get along great. At least I think we do. But a few corrections are in order, or at least a few things that need to be put in context. First, I can see that as a five-year-old, Maddie would see her dad as having abandoned the family. One day I was living there, the next day I wasn't. And that will look like abandonment to a child. But married couples do get divorced about half the time in America. And I was just living a mile or so down the street in LaGrange, Illinois. We just weren't living under the same roof. Now, about not paying medical bills, that's just not correct. Here was the financial arrangement of the divorce. Maddie's mom, my ex-wife, got $2 million at the get-go, out of the gate, a lump sum payment. Plus, I was paying her $18,000 per month in child support and alimony. This was later reduced to $12,000 per month. And of course, I paid health insurance and out-of-pocket medical costs. I also put $600,000 into the kids' college fund. In all, I paid out about $5 million to my ex-wife to cover costs for her and the kids. And this is in $2,005, so add 50% to account for inflation. In other words, I was not a deadbeat dad at all. And by the way, Maddie did not say that in her video, but a lot of the comments assume that and say that. Now, of course, there was no way for Maddie to know how much I was paying because she was a kid. This wasn't something I talked about. Also, remember that I was living one mile down the road from the kids in LaGrange, Illinois. Sidewalks all the way. An easy walk or bike ride. I saw the kids all the time. No abandonment, just a divorce. Was I at fault in the divorce? Yeah, I would say it was about 70% at fault. I own that. Maddie's mom and I were really not compatible in many ways. We were compatible in some ways, but not in other ways. Do I regret marrying Maddie's mom? No, absolutely not. If I had not married Maddie's mom, Maddie and her three siblings would not have been born. They would not have existed. The kids have turned out great. Maddie graduated from Northwestern University and is a screenwriter in Hollywood. Maddie's older sister, Tori, is a partner at a hedge fund on Wall Street, and she's getting rich. Maddie's younger sister, Olivia, just graduated from college and is teaching English to first graders in Thailand. Her older brother, Peter, is getting a master's degree in psychology. I get along great with all my kids, including Maddie. At least I think I do. So the kids are doing just fine despite dad's many shortcomings. One other slight correction, which I hesitate to even bring up because I love the way Maddie did this in her video. I did not abandon the family for breakdancing. I have a career, I'm in the advertising business, built an ad agency. That's how I was able to afford to pay Maddie's mom $5 million. Maddie's mom and I separated in 2004 and divorced in 2005. I took up breakdancing entirely by accident in 2012 as a way to get in shape at the age of 54. I then just kept doing it. I'm now age 66. Now, some of you might be wondering, can he still break dance at age 66? Well, I don't know. Let's see. I'll give it a try. Okay, Maddie, let's see. Okay, let's talk about it. I love the fact that the father came out to debunk it. Most of the time, people don't reply. The people that are being called out don't even see their side of the story. So right now we have two different stories. She told her own story as a child from, from the point of view of a child. According to the father, she was five years old when the divorce happened. And we don't know what the mom told her as a child that was growing up. So I guess she might have grown up with what she was told and her own point of view. Oh, dad abandoned us. She had no idea it was a divorce. So to her, it was abandonment. The father just got up, packed his bag and left just like that. And to her, oh, we didn't have a dad. She forgot the part that the father lived close by and probably they were visiting and all that. So to her, in her head, for dad to not live under the same roof with us, he left us. And we, like I said, we don't know what the mom was telling her to get. 
and this happens a lot in families some families not all families some families if the father and the mom are not in good terms most of the times you have the mom brainwash the kids the mom would the mom would actively and intentionally turn the kids against their dad tell them false stories make them see things from a different point of view fill their head with lies about the father that's basically the mom using those kids to fight the husband fight their father women do that a lot women do that a lot like i said i love the fact that he came out to debunk the story and for her i don't know why she went on tiktok to talk about it you know she's a tiktoker and um probably it was a trend and she decided to hop on it or she just started the trend because after she made that video people started talking about their own trauma i've seen people talk about trauma relationship trauma parenthood trauma um toxic parent trauma and all that but it could be her own trend but people started talking about their own trauma they would always um tag her and talk about their own trauma do you get so i don't know if she did that just to um i don't think she would go on on tiktok to lie about her father knowing that her father is popular her father is alive he's he's good he can come out and talk i don't know i don't know but anybody people can do things for for views and all that but anyways just know that sometimes it's not always the way the story seems it's always good you hear from the other person and she came out to make another video to make more corrections i might talk about it or i just let it slide okay so guys let me know what you think about it have you ever been in a situation where um stories were told about you and those stories were not true have you been in a situation where your wife brainwashed your kids to turn against you let me know that let me know that in the comment section what do you think about the story did your your father leave you or did your mom leave you when you were a kid what did did your parents um divorce when you were a kid did you perceive that as abandonment or you had a better understanding of what the situation was let me know your thoughts in the comment section and i will see you guys in the next one thanks for watching and bye